Welcome back to Aggressive Mastery. This is Dev Blog 5, which will hopefully be a pretty short one, because it's uh, Thursday, and I'm supposed to be watching my kiddo. I have a little boy, Logan. He's about two right now. Yeah, kids are great, as long as you believe it. All right, also, I'm starting a, a planner, which probably just looks like white sheet, but now I can kind of track what I'm doing and uh, set some goals, and really, it's, it's helpful to remind me I've done stuff. So these videos I try to keep to about 10 minutes because of the amount of time involved with them. So thanks for watching and uh, I'm sorry I'm not putting out more more frequently but maybe I can uh, if I can keep them more regular but otherwise when I have to reshoot them it doubles the time than putting stuff on YouTube and do all the editing. I really love doing that it's just the game takes a lot of time too. So this week what I did was I got in and uh, really did some work on what the map wanted to be, what I wanted the map to look like. And uh, I really like the idea of it being procedurally generated uh, to a point. A point being where there's something familiar you get in the world, some amount of knowledge you can gain, like that this building is a fire station and it has these types of entrances and exits. But I want to kind of keep it random on where that fire station is because uh, in, in, if it has good loot, I don't want you just being able to run right to it if that has any change or advantage. I like to keep the idea of the environment being fresh but have some known pieces that you can take advantage of. Alright, let's switch over and how I did that was using map magic I made a nice uh, graph that we'll go walk through quickly to place trees and grass and objects and modify the height and then I added on a add-on called spline tools to match magic and splines are what they're really calling roads or connectors and so what this will do is it will place items and then make connectors between them which helps me to build a logic on how to do a network for a anything really meaning a network between two outhouses for uh, sewer drainage pipes or even walkways back to the house or pathways between houses such as roads pathways between towns which are freeways and highways and do that all procedurally I'm um, just starting off there so the next video off will most likely show how I've taken map magic with spline tools, integrated easy roads, which builds a HD road network, and have hopefully a level next week that has some towns in it that are dynamically generated, and then we can start working on the inventory and loot systems. And that's the inventory and loot systems are going to be the things I most likely am coding myself. And so that will be where we really dive more into dots, because I want to make sure those are built with a dot system. Because uh, I'm sure that's the issue that's uh, going on, is where you have, say, 100 clients accessing a inventory system that's single-threaded, uh, where you could have disconnects and hiccups uh, on a server-client platform. All right, let's go take a look at the engine. So here we are, you've seen these trees last time in the grass. Now I won't be running this because uh, I haven't gone through and put the colliders into the map just yet. So I just fall through it. But uh, what we have here is our dense grass or grass period. That's Actually let's just turn off all the vegetation so you can see. what the raw world looks like. <clears throat> this is a 2x2 two two tile in Map Magic of about 1000 by 1000 and then what I have here is uh, down here where this gray is is my ocean. This is just uh, the lowest part of the map that I've carved out, put shorelines on and made so that I can have well let's just generate some. Uh, so I have Matt Magic go through and set the heights and connectivity for all this in this big map right here. And this is visual scripting, if you ask me, uh, which is really cool. And you can segment things out, which I did. So you could build this as just one big graph, not have any of these boxes, but uh, you can't be working on dots, not think about segmenting out your programming even when it's visual. 
So what you can see here is I have my basic geometry master here, which is this gradient. So if I was to say change this to in Oh man, this is going to take forever if I go through all these things. So you're going to have to watch somebody else's tutorial on Matte Magic because we're already at five minutes. Uh, but I'll briefly talk about how it works. What you get in the beginning here is your basic form or shape. You then can start modifying that shape as you work across the graphs. Uh, what I did is I came, took that basic slant shape, which right here, gradient X, means it goes from 0 to 1 in height on the gradient. Uh, in, a, in a gradient on the x-axis. You can also do it to the, the z-axis, pyramids or cones, and use that as your basic structure because I wanted a shoreline. And that's what we have back here is a shoreline. Now, what I'll do real quick is I'll come in to Matte Magic, turn the resolution down on the shoreline, and we'll actually generate some more. So if I go out and want to have like a 2 by 10 area, you can see out there, it now generates that shoreline as much as I want. I can make it even longer, a 2 by 100. It seems to run pretty quick and pin that down. And now, this is my infinite shoreline, so to speak. The game, what's going to be is that you start on one side, or you start somewhere on the coast, and you have to get to your hideout. So you're going to spawn in a trunk of a car, that car is going to have been run out of gas or broke down or whatever it is somewhere on the shoreline and you have a base to get back to. Uh, on your travels to your base you'll run across everybody else that's doing the same thing including AI trying to get back to their base and uh, you'll loot stuff and take stuff back and that will be the loop. The loop will be surviving from your car until you get back home and then when you decide to go back into the world you'll pop back into a car somewhere with whatever the stuff you want to bring back into the world that you took out. And so you can see here, <clears throat> right now I have these buildings, which are just my basic uh, placeholder to say I could put a point of interest there. But really it's just used to help me build my roads. So I just use this in here to show me that, um, uh, that my road uses that as a point. And you could do a lot of different stuff and how the roads are generated in Matte Magic. Is so here we have split up the biomes. So I have my coastal biome, land biome, mountain biome, and then my play areas where I want roads and mountains to be. And I use the curve here to select what part of the gradient uh, is each one of these biomes. That really lets me build a mask to use over here, where I then take in my coast biome, my, actually I think I can do this, yeah, Boom, boom, boom. I take in those biomes, or those masks, apply some noise to them, and that gives me the, uh, and blend it, and that gives me the look of each different biome. So the mountains have a steeper noise amount applied to them, 1.5 instead of 1, so I get more of that noise in the mountains. From there, I can take in my modified biomes, and combine them into one height map over here and that gives me my heights I blend my heights, bring my blended heights over here for final passing put a ramp on it to make mountains happen better and give me some lower areas then my height actually goes from here out here so I can go ahead and start generating splines so in this map here I take in my height map my map map Matte magic bounds, scatter out some points of interest, connect those points of interest, and get some uh, graphs and paths. So this path mask right here is what you see as roads. I need to start turning off these connections, but <clears throat> then flatten comes down here, and that runs on the con on the on the roads and the points of interest, and actually flattens my terrain to give me a, a flat area around my buildings and around the streets. And that comes out to a height 2 position. That comes back up here. <sighs> to our final 
high two position, runs through an erosion, and gets sent out to these final heights. Final heights goes to texturing, which is this window here. Texturing. The path comes in and gets textured out to a uh, gravel texture, and then I use uh, slopes to select uh, different gradient textures for the map. And then I'm subtracting the uh, anything that gets a little bit clogged before I get over there. And what that allows me to do down here is, is generate all this by forever. And then when I want to add trees, Vegetation Studio has a biome we, I think we spoke about in one of the prior videos. So I can come in, on, in here and add all my terrains, which I should probably reduce down from as many as I have. Then I can go ahead and, I think, turn it on, click. And now I have trees on. Uh, I've limited my trees currently to uh, uh, 300 meters for the grass and shrubs, 700 meters for the trees. And so those will just uh, generate automatically as we go down the coastline here at the draw distance. Now, of course, it's running choppier now because I'm going in an area that I hadn't generated in. You can pre-generate all this, and then which would be the right idea. But with that, <clears throat> that's probably our 10 minutes, 11 minutes, 12 minutes coming up on it. And so I have a 2 by 100 I'm sorry, a two terrain by a hundred terrain at 1,000 meter terrain size automatically generated coastline using three biomes uh, that I made inside of the map maker using splines to then connect those biomes. Let's just come on back to, to me. And so that's where we're at today. We built this, uh, this shoreline. We can make it continually. We can put some points of interest and get, ma and get road going between them and texture that pretty convincingly. Next week what I want to do is, is get in here and add some more character to the points of location, or points of interest, which means military base, uh, industrial, residential, placemats, and then run through that world and, see, and make the enter and exit uh, requirements. So that trunk that you spawn in and the hideout that you exit in, maybe start putting that game logic in there. Yeah, that sounds like good progress for next week. Thanks for tuning in. Good to virtually see you in there, that little camera eye. I'll see you later.